Hey guys, welcome back. BDCKR here. We're back with another online multiplayer team video. Today we're going to be demonstrating the, not the Arkham team. I almost said the A Arkham team. Un Arkham team. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've done Arkham teams before, but I think this is the first Arkham team that we've done that is specifically this configuration. Yeah. Uh, we're also doing something a little different here. Instead of doing two ultimates like we normally do, we're uh, making the video a little more brief, and we're showing here the last fight in an ultimate run, and then a full ultimate fight after that, which does essentially the same thing. Yeah. As makes, showing off two our uh, two full ultimate runs makes the point that completing an ultimate is not something special that you have to play a bunch and hope that you get through. Yeah. It's pretty consistent. So right off the bat, let's go through what each of their loadouts. Are I mean, we, what we really should start off with is a star every time. And in, in, in the Tantu Totem world, the star is typically the special specialist. Yeah. In which case, it's Arkham Knight Catwoman. And we picked her because her challenge just finished. And if we're going to be doing an MP team, it's usually what holds our interest at the moment. And the fact that she was the challenge recently, she's still good. It's been a while since we've done a video on her. Mm -hmm. I thought it was worth um, doing another damage over time. Um, just to sh video just to show how effective it can be. Yeah. So Arkham Knight Catwoman, her damage over time doesn't rinse, meaning that even if they tag out when they tag back in, or if Ar Astro Harness triggers that uh, on the opponent, they will still take the full value of any damage over time. Mm -hmm. And so for her, it makes a lot of sense since the damage over time won't rinse to top load her damage over time. And that could be something else that has... Uh, an effect like Iba stick, or I believe it's the the helmet, the Lexcore helmet. But mm. we've chosen Quake Engine because once it's finished on one person, it'll start again on somebody else. Yeah, um, but you also want to give her more bars of power to do a lot of specials to trigger as much damage over time as possible. And for that purpose, we've given her the special specialist Master's Death Card and Tattoo Totem combo. Right, right. Um, easy choice on any Arkham team is to have Arkham Knight Batgirl, which we do because her passive will save her teammates. Um, and because she can stun at the beginning of her special one, we give her Necron's Scythe. Mm -hmm. And because we didn't want to give up a gear slot to give her Razzle Glow Scimitar for power, we're kind of leaning into her chance to stun on Tagen and giving her Cloak of Destiny too. So it, it stacks. It Basically, this, the, the same ability to, to boost damage with uh, yeah. on stunned opponents, doing it twice. Mm-hmm. And, um, to give her a ridiculous amount of damage boost. Yes. And then the overpowered super so that if she is the last resort, there's still a chance even if her health is low. Mm -hmm. I mean, normally we don't take advantage of those, the the low health abilities. It's true. But, I mean, and this is sort of the first formulation. I mean, after we play this, it'll, it'll become obvious maybe there's some other things that we want to try. Um, I mean, effectively, because Arkham Knight Batgirl is really the savior, we're giving Arkham Knight Catwoman who is our main damage dealer a, a second life yeah. to do more it, her loadout doesn't really matter if we get to a fight where Arkham Knight Batgirl really matters then we've screwed up a lot already um, mm -hmm. but what's interesting is Arkham Killer Croc and maybe we'll get into the reasons why he's there um, and it's certain probably not the reason you think um, he's our tank his passive is great for taking advantage of Catwoman doing a bunch of specials, mm -hmm. uh, especially if she's doing specials against somebody with the Astro Harness where it doesn't connect. And then it, it's basically just giving you free health, right? So uh, his he gets the armor from his passive. We give him Killer Croc companion gear and get gold soda to minimize basic damage. And the third piece doesn't matter as much, I don't think. I mean, it, in this case, it's Claw of Horus for the gear shattering ability in case he actually needs to do something. Yeah. But, I mean, I think just as effective would be a uh, charged disc, for example, which is only a three and a half star gear. Yeah. Um, because it'll decrease the damage it takes even more. Wait, wait, two and a half star gear, right? Doesn't it end up as a three star gear? Does it start at two and go to three, or start as three and go to four? Four is legendary, right? Does it start as four and go to five? Is five legendary? Yeah. I've gotten all mixed up. I am all mixed up, too. You know what? Um, <laughs> ignore all that. Just it's it's not the legendary gears. It's a step below that. Yeah. Um, so it goes one to two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, two one, one, two, three, and then yeah, yeah, four to five. Right. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, so I mean, the thing is, you could give him a, another typical tank loadout, which is uh, a, a couple of the fourth world gear set to give him a revive. 
now the problem is it takes up two slots if it was one slot it would definitely be worth it but taking up two slots when his armor can be almost as good as a revive seems a bit of a waste mm -hmm. okay um so i mean we're we're motoring pretty well through these teams this is going to be a little bit interesting because the decision at any time with killing joke joker is whether you want to just motor through him and then catch the other guys uh off guard so that you get a chance to do some specials against them before they do a super because super prioritizes over yeah. everything else or um you just wait them out or you can use killer croc to um eat the super if he does it so what we're hoping for because it hits oh oh he's blocked so we got to be really fast oh we're lucky because he didn't complete his block and uh -oh. her special goes fast so killer croc can eat the super yeah and he'll probably survive this because he's got the armor, extra armor from tagging in and from Catwoman. Yeah. I, I think one important thing to notice here is that um, Killer Croc is good because of how many special ones we're using here, right? Special twos and special ones, Special yes. twos and special ones, yes. yeah, but um, just triggering damage over time. One of the issues with a damage over time based special specialist is that you end up not being able to make as much use of Tantu Totem because... Whenever you're applying oh, damage you over time, it means because you're not knocking people out. The one advantage that we have that means it's not always that way is Quake Engine, right? Because yes. it refreshes the damage over time, it means that you can still make use of damage over time and Tantu Totem at the same time. Right. So, you know, you can see here, if we're using our special and the same damage over time as applying to one enemy, we're not getting our spe uh, specials back the same way that we normally would right. try to with Tantu and, Totem. And the beauty of Catwoman is I think she does damage over time on both her special one and special two. Yeah. And her special two, in a lot of cases, is going to be strong enough to knock somebody like, like it just happened here. And I can't tell if he's got some of the damage over time from her first special or not, but he's going to get another one. Doesn't couple. matter. Yeah, and this was a, a specific choice because of the, the Flashpoint Aquaman's barrier we didn't want to use up all our health fighting it whoops you doodles but in this case because one of them's already knocked out it's not nearly as bad yeah right because we are sacrificing our own health to finish him off like that and that was that was pretty easy i mean it, we should probably anytime we make a team we should talk about not only showing how good it is but talk about what their potential weaknesses are and what you have to keep in mind yeah. And I think the biggest weakness of any damage over time team and this damage over time team specifically, because nobody else is doing much uh, uh, other damage, is a Blackest Knight team that has Flash. Mm -hmm. Because he'll reverse the damage over time into health gain and power gain. And the only thing I can say is that, funnily enough, even playing this team a bunch of times, that we don't face that uh, Blackest Knight Flash team very much at all. That's true. Yeah, it's I mean, a little surprising, actually. Yes. Um, so, what's kind of cool is that. Uh, oh, is he still stunned or no? He's out of it. Oh, yeah, he's out of it. That's you can tell by how little damage is done. And the problem now is Astro Harness is going to be an issue. So maybe it'll be worth trying to get to the next trigger, the next immunity, because we don't want Arknight Catwoman to get knocked out. But although this is the last guy, it probably won't matter as much. Yeah, we're not going to run into <coughs> issues here. In all likelihood. Yeah, I mean, we still got armor. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. I mean, some things that you would think would otherwise be difficult. I mean, if we'd had more health on Catwoman, it wouldn't be a problem in this fight. But Astro Harness isn't as bad because we just take advantage of that. And I always, I mean, listen, Tantu Totem can always wait out an Astro Harness. But <coughs> it's even better when you're actually getting some sort of benefit from doing specials that don't land. Yeah. When there's sort of a tangible where the time after <coughs> Astro Harness, if you've done it right, you're actually more powerful. Yes. And this might be enough. I mean, if it's not, he's clearly going to bleed out in not much time at all. Yeah, he's yeah. done. There we go. So it's still a viable team. It is definitely more difficult if you're going to be facing the Blackest Knight team. I mean, in the, the metal team with Catwoman... The Batman Ninja Catwoman is always going to be difficult, no matter who you're, uh, who you're, repping with your team. Mm -hmm. But the, it's a combination of both, I think the damage over time, but also the fact that Catwoman is versatile. She can do the bleed on either special, and you, I mean, it's 
I think it's really fun to stack a bunch of special ones and have them bleed out really fast. Mm, but for it, sure. but it's difficult on a team like this where we're we're afraid of um, either Luchador Bane or Raven tagging in and either knocking us out Luchador Bane uh, or stealing our power. Mm -hmm. So it helps that oops. <coughs> it helps that um oh, and look he's bled out. It helps that her special two is powerful enough that it can knock people out and still have a little bit left over mm -hmm. for the next guy tagging in. Yeah, so the story behind this is originally it was going to be a Godfall Superman video the week before to demonstrate how good he was. He's got the passive that reflects uh, damage if you put some uh, Gingold Soda and Killer Croc Companion gear on him. He basically takes zero basic damage when he's blocking, and he'll yeah. also generate a bunch of power. So we did the video, but there's not really a great spot for tanks anymore. I mean, the evolution of the game really is damage output. So at first it was basic damage, and then once Santi Tone came out, it was specials became the most important strategy. Yeah, and it's also not particularly interesting to showcase a tank. Yes. Your but best case scenario is you're showcasing them when your fights are slow. Yeah. But then, in the case of a damage over time person, a tank is more useful only because you tag them in, you wait out till they bleed out, or burn out, or poison out. Yeah. And then you tag in your Tanty Totem guy back, mm -hmm. which is kind of fun. But then, when Arkham Knight Catwoman came out, I thought, okay, so here we're going to make a team with Arkham Knight Catwoman as damage over time, Godfall Superman with a, as the tank, and then we realized as we were playing with it, man, there's nothing really to... You know, make Godfall Superman any better than Killer Croc, and in fact, Killer Croc is way better because of his passive. Yeah. For him, the armor and the Catwoman's passive. I don't actually. I don't even know. It might just be only Arkham Knight, so maybe that doesn't even help her passive. But definitely, his passive is helped out by her. Yeah. And he becomes an even better tank than Godfall Superman, even though he doesn't have that trick of not taking any basic damage. So that's the story behind the story. And now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> and it gets right to the end. Yeah, uh, I think this is not this is not a bad way of doing it. The last fight of an ultimate and then doing another quick ultimate run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let us know in the comments if you prefer these little quicker videos this way or if you'd prefer us to do both ultimates together because we could probably just ramble on after this. Yeah. But anyways, here right at the end, we'd like to give a huge thank you to everybody supporting us on Patreon. We have Console Peasant, who is supporting us at the Last Word tier, John Oriema at the Your Message Here tier, Sean Farrell, Daniel Simonson, Aaron Mall, and Michael DeVries on the Credited level, and Eddie G and Chris Wolf on the Gratitude level. Thanks so much for your support, and thanks so much to all of you for watching. We'll see you next time. Komoda! Komoda.